Very rarely do I come across the game where I stop and think, this is something special. This is something that stands out from all of the other games that are coming out right now. And such a game has crossed the Red Zone Rogue desk. It is a game that I first approached it with a little bit of hesitation. I had a lot of questions when the creator reached out to me. But the more he talked about the game, the more I got excited about it, starting with who this person is who is creating the game. How's it going, Rogues Gallery? And today, we are going to be talking about Grim Path, an upcoming war game TCG made by someone who used to work at Double Fine, one of the most well-respected video game studios, to be completely honest. In fact, when Dave Gardner, the creator of Grim Path, told me, he's like, hey, do you play video games? And I'm like, oh yeah, I love video games. And then he's like, have you ever heard of Double Fine? I, I worked there for many years. I was like, yeah, the you know studio that made Brutal Legend, one of my personal all-time favorite games, as well as stuff like, I don't know, Psychonauts. Um, I was, you know, I was like, ooh, tell me more about your game. Because someone with that amount of game dev and industry experience They've got to be cooking something good, and Grim Path, I said, like I said at the start, is something special. So we're going to talk about Grim Path today. We're going to give you kind of like a quick rundown of the game. I haven't personally played it yet, but I did speak to Dave for maybe four to five hours about this. He invited me to talk about the game, and uh, you know, I agreed, and like I said, the more we talked about it, the more... I was sold. And by the end of it, I really wanted to play the game. I really wanted to, you know, learn more about the characters and just the world and everything. It looks so much fun. So let's talk about Grim Path. So what is Grim Path? Like I said, Grim Path is a war game TCG. It is a trading card game where you use minis to do battle. So there's a lot to break down here. So first of all, the first thing that I um, went into this was Okay, that sounds cool, but minis are kind of a big ask, right? So gaming is a niche hobby. TCGs are a niche hobby in a niche hobby. And then wargaming is also another niche hobby. And then it's like these two niche hobbies like combined together. And I'm like, okay, this seems intimidating, right? This seems like a, a daunting ask for new folks. But this is where a lot of uh, Dave's game industry dev experience really really shines through he wants to, the game to have a very low barrier of entry he wants it to be very approachable and he wants it just to be a ton of fun and these focuses on consumer friendliness low barrier of entry and just just fun is super important it is super super important this is how you actually make a game that people want to play you don't start with like oh i want to make a collectible to make a lot of money no you are like hey this is something that i'm really passionate about and i want it to be a lot of fun and i want other folks to have fun playing my thing and this is how grim path is being approached and this is how i think this is how you do it and not only that is it has like this really really high level of polish right the art looks phenomenal um like it's this all original art with the like original characters there's a lot of like fun to it here's a card called tramp and rambler look how cute this thing is it's a cute little hobbit and it summons a cute little little a uh, little pet dude when you when you play it. And we'll talk about how you actually play the game in, in just a moment, but I wanna go back to accessibility, right? Because I think that's super important. So, uh, minis are not random, right? You do not have little gotcha pawn mini box things. If you want the mini, you just buy the mini. And Dave was telling me he found a really good manufacturer in um, California that actually can make minis for pretty cheap, which means he could sell the minis also for pretty cheap, but that's not all. The um, level of consumer friendliness here is so good because he also, if you want, encourages folks to play with the minis that they already have. Or you can 3D print your own minis, or you can go to your LGS and look at their giant wall of unsold minis and buy one of those minis to use instead of one of the official Grim Path minis. So if you want to get a, an official Grim Path mini, you can. If you want to get a um, you know mini that you already own and play with that, you can. If you want to 3D print your own, you can also do that. And then on top of all of that, when you think about, okay, minis, that's still a pretty big ask, because like in Warhammer, and I'm someone who literally just started playing Warhammer 40k, it's a really, really daunting ask because you have to you know, buy the mini, then you have to take it home, you have to cut out 
all of the pieces from the sprues. You have to figure out where you glue them together and follow a guide and then paint it all. And it's just huge undertaking. It's very time consuming. But Grimpath wants to make it so you can basically do whatever you want. You can tailor your experience to what you want to get out of wargaming. So if you want to have that super in-depth complicated experience where you, you know, put it all together, he will have minis for that. He's going to be calling them like legendary minis. Like I said, there's no rarity. You just, you just buy the mini, right? Um, then he's going to have an intermediate mini where there's a, some assembly required. Um, it'll be a little less complicated than the, the, the legendary one. And then he's going to have a very like um, casual or noob friendly one. Or if you're just like me who just wants to get a mini and just, just play with it, he will have that. That's already pre-made. You just buy it. You're good to go. None of them are going to be painted, right? And I think that, you know, helps keep the cost down of all this stuff. So you will have to paint them if you want to have them, you know, fully looking good and, and all painted and that kind of stuff. But you don't, you don't really need to. If you just want to buy the minis and play with them, you can. And I think this is also very, very good for local game stores who you could stock the Grim Path minis if you want, right? Or you can just sell all of the WizKids minis that you have on your shelves that are just collecting dust for this brand new game that people could be excited for. So it's very, very consumer friendly. It's very, very LGS friendly. And it's just a really, really smart model. And so, um, yeah, so that, that, that's basically how it's gonna be. So then you're gonna be like, okay, then how do I get the minis if the LGS isn't selling them? Well, he wants to sell them on his website. And so if you just want the mini, you can just do that. Um, and it's super, super great. So the, the cards, the actual TCG aspect, will be random and booster packs and that kind of stuff outside of starter box products, right? Um, so you will need to open up packs to expand upon your collection, but if you open up a legendary, like a super rare dragon or, or whatever, I don't really know the rarities or anything right now, but if you open up a, a big dragon, it, you don't have to open up a random mini dragon as well. You just go buy it if you, if you want to do that or use a dragon that you already own. So that gave me a ton of confidence. That's the thing that I was worried about the most is the mini aspect because it feels like a intimidating ask, but it's actually it's actually not. Um, he also was saying, and we were talking about this quite a bit, uh, and I thought it's a good idea to have little bundles. So if you're just like, okay, I want to play the spirit element. He has four elements. I don't remember all the top all of them off the top of my head, but there's like spirit, fury, nature, and another one. But um, he's like, okay, I was like, if you just want to make get like a a fury starter pack, and it has like whatever, like some goblins and some, you know, elementals or, or something like that. You just buy a little starter pack and you're good to go. I think that's really smart and I think that's something you should do. Um, we also talked about uh, having starter product, which we both agreed is very, very important. Having just like a starter box, either starter decks or like a box set um, is really important for this kind of experience where you just buy it, you have a deck, you have all of your minis already, good to go. You're good to go. You don't have to do anything else. You just buy the product and play with a friend. And I think that's really important. And on top of that, I suggested that they do a, a full box set that has all four, um, all four elements or whatever you want to call them, all four factions um, in a single product that has minis good to go, decks good to go, a 10 by 10 grid, which is the standard. We'll talk about that in just a second. Uh, and just buy the product like a board game, play it. Don't even have to pay attention to the TCG aspect. If you want to play it like a war game, if you want to play it like a board game, just buy this. You're good to go. You don't have to worry about the cards at all. Um, or if you buy it, you, you're like, oh, this is really cool. I want to make my Fury Army better. Then you can get into the booster aspect and try to start collecting and get like rare cards and then buy the minis that go with them. All of that kind of stuff that comes with TCGs. And so I think it's very smart. It's also very unique in the TCG space. And it sounds very, very fun. So let's get into how you actually play the game. And like I said, I haven't personally played yet. He's going to be sending me some decks. I will play test them and I will report back after I have done so, but it just sounds a lot of fun. So the game system is basically you get one resource per turn, kind of like a hearthstone kind of thing. You get one resource per turn and you also advance your fog of war by one a turn as well, up to 10 for both of them. And you play on a 10 by 10 grid uh, for the standard rules format. Uh, one really, really brilliant thing is that he's made the, uh, the rules so that they um, are expandable and scale to whatever you want to do, right? So you can play on a 20 by 20 if you want. You can play on a 50 by 50 if you want. The rules are made to scale with that. In fact, you can play on a grid 
Or if you want to be super hardcore about it, or if you're just really used to playing with rulers from war games, you can do that too, because movement is worded in such a way like take a step, take four steps, right? Where you can just ju um, define what a step is. So maybe a step is an inch if you're using rulers, but you know, normally a step is going to be one square. So he does have like a standardized rule set for like more competitive play, more standardized play, right? Um, 10 by 10 grid. A step is one square but like i said it scales to whatever you want so if you want to have that giant war gaming experience you can do so which i think is very very smart and as part of this overall sense of consumer friendliness right this low barrier of entry you can just you can just do what you want you can like i said i think this is super important you can just 3d print your own minis if you want and that is just awesome because i know there's a huge community about that, you know, getting into Warhammer, I know there's a lot of folks who are really keen on just printing their own, which it's something you can do. And, you know, hopefully that he can offer the minis at, at such a price, like a low price where, you know, you really have to think like, okay, do I actually want to print my own or is it cheaper just to buy this, you know, mini for a dollar or whatever. Anyway, we're talking about the gameplay. So that's how it works. You have the Fog of War that extends once per turn, and it's just basically a, a line, like right in front of you on, on the grid. So on turn one, you have just one line for your Fog of War, and then it increases by one for the whole the whole row, and then so on and so forth and, until the whole grid, the whole 10 by 10 grid is um, in your purview, right? Uh, when you play a card, you, so you don't start the game with any minis at all. This is like a very much like a you know card game. You don't start with any minis, but what you do is you have your cards and then you use your resources to summon your minis. So say you have a one drop mini that um, summons, like we'll use the um, the Tramp and Rambler, right? You play it and then it, you know, play it on, on your field, right? You can play it anywhere that's in your Fog of War zone, right? So it expands over time. So, you know, on turn 10, you can literally play it on your opponent's front lines um, or back lines, whatever, however you want to do the nomenclature. Uh, you win by killing enemy units to get points or by occupying enemy lands to get points. So it's kind of like a points-based uh, victory setting. I think you think you want to get like 10 points or something like that. I don't remember exactly how it is, but um, I think it's really smart because it opens up different avenues of play where you can be super aggressive and just try to you know, can, you know know kill your opponent's stuff or you can try to do a more defensive strategy, maybe occupy your opponent's lands and set up a, a defensive thing like that. There's also terrain. So you there'll be terrain that obfuscate the battlefield. So like pillars and things you can hide behind, but there'll also be terrain that elevates, um, well, the battlefield. So like a watchtower, for example, you can put your little goblin archer on the watchtower and then um, if they have the ability high ground they'll get a bonus because they have the high ground that kind of stuff they'll be flying enemies that can only be attacked by um, characters that have range or, or at the same altitude um, it's just so much fun and you can play cards that make the watchtower or whatever or you can start the battlefield with like pillars and the pillars will create line of sight we talked a lot about fiddliness with rules and i, I was you know very much uh, interested in this kind of stuff. So like for line of sight, for example, I was like, okay, do you have to like get down on the level and then create like, you know, a laser or draw a line to see if you actually have line of sight? And he's like, no, it's very streamlined. Basically how it works is if you are behind cover, um, no one can target the unit behind cover unless they are behind that cover as well. Um, so basically, it doesn't create the situation where you have these weird angles where you're like, oh, is it over, is it over here? And they, can, they, can they see like the edge of it or whatever? Um, it makes it very clean and very clear cut. And I think that's very smart for something like this. And once again, low barrier of entry, ease of play, that kind of stuff where it's like easy to learn the rules, easy to grasp, but has some like depth for folks who want to dive into that kind of stuff. Um, like I said, really smart. And I think it's Super cool. It's super cool. No other grid-based card game is like this at all. And the other ones I can think of are like Sorcery. Sorcery is very, very different where you play land cards and play stuff on your land. Oh, and um, uh, Genesis is you have like a, a champion and you move the champion around. This, you don't have like a champion or anything like that. Like you are the arbiter of the battlefield. It's just like a war game. It feels to me more like a Warhammer Kill Team or XCOM or like a D&D &D, uh, 
session with minis, right? And I think that those are the folks that this game will appeal to, or it could appeal to TCG players who are looking to get into wargaming like me. So like, I'm like the perfect audience for this is like, I wanna play war games, I wanna play with minis and cool stuff like that. Um, but Warhammer is just a lot. It's a lot to get into where this is like, no, you just, you just buy the mini. Um, so I think it's super cool. I think it's a game that you should definitely have on your radar. Almost no one knows about it. I was talking to Dave and he was like, obviously he has a lot of experience with game development. He worked on Brutal Legend and a bunch of other Double Fine games, uh, he, doing animation and game uh, design and game development, but he doesn't really know a lot about like social media, right? And so I think that's one of the reasons why no one knows this exists, even though it's like, I think incredible. Um, you just look at the art and you're like, this person cares like and once i talked about him a lot about a lot of stuff there's a lot of like cool easter eggs he like really cares about like the art and like all these like fun little references like there's indiana jones references and in some of the cards i won't spoil it but um it's just kind of thing where you you can tell talking to the person that they just really love what they're doing and one of the things that like really struck me was we talked about um, Kickstarters, we talked about success and failures in Kickstarters and how, in my opinion, a lot of them are just gonna, not gonna, not gonna make it. Uh, we've seen this already with some games like Akora that was like pretty hype and then came out, no one cares. Um, some people probably care, but no one cares. Um, and I think this is a game that comes out and people will care because it's, it's so unique, it's so polished, it's so cool. And it's just something that I was talking to him and like, that's not his goal to be huge and to make a ton of money like obviously that'd be nice for anyone out there like that would be cool right but he told me specifically like if some it, he would be happy if some people just liked his game and he made enough to just continue making the game like he would be happy if it was just just that he just made just enough to continue making the game he would be happy and it's that kind of attitude and that kind of focus on um gameplay and focus on just general sense of fun and consumer friendliness it's this kind of stuff that actually makes a good game and that's the kind of thing that gets me sold it's not like the cynical thing where someone's like oh i see all these kickstarter games that are super successful i want to get on the bandwagon and, and make as much money as possible so like this is like it's magic but um you know greek magic or it's like it's magic but you know this or whatever it's it's not that it's something that has definitely had a lot of thought it's something that is definitely targeting a much wider audience than just like tcg players i think this game appeals to a way wider audience than anything that i cover on the channel because it can appeal to the board game audience it feels kind of like gloomhaven right it can appeal to the DD &D audience because it feels like a DD &D session but like just a, like a little microcosm he's told me the games last like 15 minutes right it feels like XCOM if you're into that kind of thing. Or it also can feel like a trading card game where you build up your deck and you have that collecting element or it can feel like the war game where you have like this other element of like getting your minis and painting them. But it's not so deep and crazy into any of those where it's alienating. And that's like one of the things, that's like one of the things I think is like the most important part about this is like, if you don't really care about the minis all that much, you just buy the pre-made minis and you're good to go. Like, doesn't matter. Um, just you buy them, you play them, you're good. Um, same, likewise for like the, the card game stuff. Um, you can just get the cards and then you're good to go. You still have the TCG aspect, you know, buying singles, all that kind of stuff. But if you don't care about competitive stuff, and he does want to have competitive play. I'll, I'll note that now. He does want to have competitive play. Um, but if you don't give a crap about that and you just want a cool board game to play, just get it as a board game and play it as a board game. Um, and like I said, I think it's very smart and I think it's like, it's so cool. I just want to play it. I, I, I love the art. He's about, he's, he told me he's got 90 something, almost a hundred cards made right now. He wants to make over 200 to stay on par with other games like Sorcery who are making like robust launch sets. Um, and I think that's smart, not just to be competitive with that kind of stuff, but just to have like a lot of options when your game releases so people can dig in and do, do a lot of different stuff. Uh, deck construction is like other TCGs, um, like magic, where you can just put whatever in whatever. Like, so you can have a four color deck if you want, but there is a mechanic. I didn't really talk about this that much. So you have the resources, right? You get one resource per turn up to 10, right? And that refreshes every turn. So at 10, you just get 10 and then you'll get 10 again. It's like Hearthstone. 
But there's also a secondary resource that you funnel your main resource into, and you do that through the cards. So on the cards, you can see there's like a little symbol in the middle, right underneath the art, and that is the conversion rate for that element, right? So if it's a two, you convert one resource into two of that element. So it's kind of a way you can ramp too. So it's not exactly a one-to-one -one filter. Um, so, so if that's a three, one resource to make three of that element. And that element is how you play your actions, right? Or in spells and that kind of stuff, right? So you use the resources to play the minis and then you use the minis and funnel the resources to channel their spells and stuff. And they're the ones who do the, the, the things, right? Very much like D&D, very much like Gloomhaven, right? Like, like it's not like some omnipotent being doing stuff though, maybe, but a lot of the cases will be like, this wizard shoots this lightning bolt at that mini kind of thing, using their resources that they channeled or whatever. Um, so yes, that's, that's Grim Path. It's something that I've been chatting about with a lot of friends. Everyone that I've talked to has been like, oh, this looks cool. And that's a really good sign that um, I think this has traction. And I think it's just like no one knows about it. So overall, if this seems interesting to you, go follow their stuff. They're mostly active on Discord. Uh, or not Discord. They are making a Discord. They're mostly active on Instagram as well as they have been a little bit active on Twitter. So I will have links down below. Go follow them on those two things. If they make a Discord, which uh, Dave is thinking about making a Discord, like I said, he told me he's bad at social media, so this is something that he's learning and getting better at. I think he's a good game designer, but not, not good at social media kind of stuff, which is, which is fair, right? Um, and so, yes, go follow that stuff down below. Uh, once there's a Discord, I might come back and put a Discord here, but you can probably find the Discord through the other means as well. So if they make a Discord, he'll probably post about it on the Twitter, on the Instagram, that kind of stuff. And you can also be assured that I will be covering this game a little bit more in the future too, especially if I like it. And so that, that's the other big caveat. I have not played the game yet. Normally when I talk about a game like this, like Sorcery, I've already played the game and tested it extensively, but I will be getting, uh, he told me literally, I'm gonna be getting the first demo decks that they have. So yep, I'm gonna get those, we're gonna play. And I really do think it's gonna be a lot of fun. Um, I'm really curious to see what my partner has to say about it because she's a good litmus test for the wider audience because she's not, she doesn't think about card games all day like I do, right? I love card games, it's my life. Um, literally, it's my job. So um, for her, it's not. It's just something that we sometimes casually play, mostly like she and I play a lot of Arkham Horror. Um, and But she really enjoyed Sorcery. And so if she really enjoys a game like this, um, I think, I think it, could have a lot going for it. And I think it already has a lot going for it, to be honest. Um, if you are so someone coming in and you're like, is it gonna be investable? I don't know. And frankly, I don't care, uh, to be honest. I just want a game that looks good and is fun. And this game looks good and looks like it's gonna be fun. And it, it looks like if those things are met, right? If those things are met and the company is smart, if Dave is smart about doing things, um, the game, will be that's just how it is like if no one cares about your game if no one plays your game you can't invest in it right you want so, you want a game that people like and you know that want to play that's how you have a game that's you know collectible that's how you game have a game that's successful and that's what this is so well i think it is we'll see we we, we will see moral of the story um i think people with years of experience in game design like Dave, who, you know, like I said, worked for years at Double Fine, one of the most well-respected video game studios out there, has a great mind for games. And when these folks make card games out of pure passion, I think they turn out to be something very special. So keep an eye on Grim Path. I'll be covering it more in the future. Um, I will say for those who've sticked around this long, it's pretty far out, right? Uh, he's only made like less than half or maybe about half of the cards that he wants to do. He's literally going around to local game stores and play testing and demoing the game. That's where we're at now. He wants to do a Kickstarter. In fact, he even asked my opinions on whether he should do a Kickstarter or not. I personally think Kickstarter is a great way to get eyes on your product. And that's what he needs right now. He needs eyes on the game. I think the game looks awesome. And I think if he continues down this line and I think if, I think if the game is actually fun, it could be a huge, huge success. He just needs eyes on the game. So I do think Kickstarter is 
something that he should do, especially if he hasn't even made all the cards yet and, you know, all the art, and the art's so good, so that that's expensive. That's so expensive. I know. I commissioned professional artists to do my stuff. I know how expensive it is to do the um, commercial commission, so that could help him finish it up. Like I said, he already has like 90-something like um, uh, good to go, so... Let me know what you think. Let me know what you think of Grim Path in the comments down below. I'm pretty excited for it. It's one of those things, like I said, it comes across my desk and I'm like, this is special. Like this, this is on a whole other tier. This reminds me of sorcery kind of thing. This reminds me of Grand Archive where the polish is just next level. This is like triple A polish on an indie game. Um, and that's really rare, really, really rare. Um, and everything he told me was like perfect. It was like everything, He's just got a great mind about it. So I'm rambling now. I'm just rambling. I'm pretty excited about this. So let me know what you think down below. Thanks for watching, everyone. See you next time.